In our last video, we took a look at Linksys Velop and examined how a mesh Wi-Fi network works and why I think it is the best home Wi-Fi solution. In today's video, we will take an in-depth look at the Linksys app and explore all of the advanced features offered by this whole home Wi-Fi solution. First, I want to show you how to see your nodes. So up here, if you click nodes, it'll pop in and list out all the nodes you have connected, including your parents. So the top would be the parent and then the child. And then you can, of course, click on them and it'll give you more information. None of this is probably in your scope, but of course, update the firmware, but automatic firmware updates already enabled. So another thing you wouldn't have to do is update these manually because it's automatically set up to update automatically. So you don't have to worry about any of that. So that's the notes. That's how you can go in and see, you know, here's this one, here's that one, rename them, whatever. Anyways, you can see the devices that are connected to this list. So that's actually another thing too, is if you pop in here, notice it says it's connected to my iPad 4. So that's this one, the iPad Air 4 is connected to this one, the parent node, to this node's five gigahertz network. So a lot of routers right now, what they do is they broadcast both a 2.4 gigahertz band and a five gigahertz band. And I'll quickly explain that. So the 2.4 gigahertz is better for longer range, um, but at slower speeds. Meanwhile, the five gigahertz range for a smaller range and at much higher speeds. So what these things actually do is they'll actually connect you to whichever band will give you the best connection. So in my case, I'm connected to the parent node and I'm right next to it. So it automatically gives me the five gigahertz connection, which is fantastic. I love that because on my network right now, I have a two gigahertz and a five gigahertz across two routers. So that's four networks broadcasting. I have to switch constantly. And with this, it'll automatically switch between nodes and way less hassle than it is now. With that, let's dive deeper into the connected devices because this is important. You know, if you want to, in this case with my iPad, you know, if you have a child's device, you may want to throw some parental controls on there, um, like blocking categories or websites or, you know, canceling internet access altogether to a device. Um, very important if you have kids or maybe you want to prioritize a device like, you know, you don't want to, um, you're playing live on your console. You don't want to drop frames or whatever, lose connection. You want to prioritize your console over, I don't know, your sister in the next room over watching TV on Netflix. So you could do that kind of stuff. You can give it a name. So if you want to see this device as a different name, whenever it's connected to the network, like say you have, uh, I don't know, four iPad fours in your house and they all show up as iPad four. You can go in there and individually name them. You can see all sorts of information about the device that is connected, like the device manufacturer, the model number, the operating system, which is actually also kind of crazy because you think you can see this at home. Anytime you connect to a public Wi-Fi network, you can see these same details. Kind of crazy to think of. And now that technology is being like front and center for um, consumer products now. So it's a kind of eye-opening experience, I think. And it's kind of neat too. You could even customize the icon. Um, but that's a bunch of stuff that, you know, once again, for most people probably won't be a big deal, but it's cool that it's there. So you can set up parental controls across everything, um, even certain devices it looks like. Just note, you can only block specific websites and temporarily pause the internet on certain devices. If you want to do any more than that, you will need to get a Linksys Shield subscription at $5 a month. You can set up a guest network, so we could go ahead and do that. Test guest is what we can call this network. Test guest, password, test guest, safe. This could take up to a minute. Um, we'll give it a moment, saved. When setting up the guest network, I got a notification that the settings had saved. Meanwhile, the text box was reverting to the default network name and the guest Wi-Fi was still switched off. After checking my iPad's Wi-Fi settings, I could see that the guest network was broadcasting correctly. And after restarting the Linksys app, it finally reflected those changes. But that brings me to my next subject when it comes to mesh networks. Mesh networks are all about software. 
It's a software that bounces you from node to node or to the 5 gigahertz band to the 2.4 gigahertz band based on where you're at and what you're doing. And it's software that binds all this together. But you know what? On the surface, once you set up the parent node and then add a child node, there's really no other configuration needed. You don't have to worry about configuring multiple Wi-Fi networks, this and that. It's just one network that broadcasts over the course of your house. You could be over here and connect to this node. And as you walk over here, you connect to this node. It's as easy as that. Um, but let's see, what else is there to see here? It's, what does share Wi-Fi do? Oh, you can just share your Wi-Fi that way. That's pretty neat. So let's run a speed test. The speed test in the Linksys app allows you to see how fast your internet is going to your router. Then this data is used to help optimize features like device priority. Now seeing the speeds a router is receiving, let's run a speed test on my iPad and test the wireless speeds of the network. So cool, 510, that's not bad, 301. As I said, it's not gonna be gigabit, but I mean, you can only do so much over wireless. Pop over here and see what's over here. Got guest network controls, that's cool. All right, did that on the homepage. Let's see what Wi-Fi settings gives you. Let's see if this gives you anything different. So we got the Wi-Fi name. So this is basically, you know, the same stuff we set up originally. Um, password type, um, that's, you know, WAP2 is okay. Mixed Wi-Fi mode, cool. Channel finder, oh, cool. It automatically scans for channels. Let's run it, let's see what happens. Right now, the channel finder is getting information on other nearby Wi-Fi networks. This way, it can find a space it can broadcast without interfering with others or others interfering with it. Well, there we go. Let's see what it says. We've optimized your Wi-Fi channels to improve your Wi-Fi speed and bandwidth. Cool. Let's see the technical details. All righty. So the parent mode has been moved from channel 3 to channel 5 on the 2.4 gigahertz and 153.36. Oh, okay, cool. Good to know. Connected device with WPS. We'll actually talk about WPS later. So we'll talk about that when we start looking at Wi-Fi range extenders. Next, let's take a look at Linksys Aware, a subscription service that turns your mesh network into a motion sensor. Here's how it works. Your mesh nodes are broadcasting Wi-Fi throughout your home. At the same time, the broadcasts are being analyzed for movement within your coverage area. So as you're walking around your home, the router can see its signals are hitting a moving object. You can then choose when you would like to be notified of that movement. Coming in at $3 a month or $25 a year, it's pretty tempting to see how well it works. If I give it a try, I'll be sure to keep you posted. All right, now we got the priority thing. And let's, you know what, let's go through here. Let's have my iPad as a priority. Device based on the speed of 803 megabits per second. Let's see if that changes my last speed. So I got 510 last time. Let's see if this prioritizing does anything. Well, that's not at all what I was expecting. That's actually slightly worse. That's actually slightly worse. Let's pop into notifications. Notify yourself if a child goes offline. This is especially important if you have this set up in a wireless situation. So as I was saying, the child node wirelessly connecting to the parent. In this case, I just have it plugged in. But if you do set it up wirelessly, you'll probably want to get notifications when one of your children go offline, because then when that happens, a whole side of your house possibly could lose an internet connection. Um, so it's something you want to, you know, keep an eye on. But once again, wouldn't be an issue if you were able to plug it in directly. So once again, if you have the option to plug your node directly into the internet, take advantage of that option. You know, run an ethernet cable if you have to. Um, so we'll keep that enabled for now. Let's see what else is hidden in here. Go into advanced settings, internet settings. This is what? DHCP information. Um, yeah. I don't know who would ever want to use a mesh router and bridge node. Let's see additional settings. Okay. Now well, that's important. Let's go to the next thing. Uh, port settings. So if you need to like set up port forwarding for certain devices, you can do all that there. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Let's go back in here. 
Wi-Fi Mac filters. So if you want to, you know, only let certain devices connect, you can go in and add their Mac address. Each internet device has its own um, unique address. So you can either allow all of them or block all of them and only allow certain ones. So that's kind of neat. Once again, a more higher end feature, which is pretty neat. So let's see what local network settings are. So this is like your router's IP address, subnet mask, DHCP stuff. Lastly, after updating the firmware, I was able to add the nodes to HomeKit. This will automatically configure a firewall between your HomeKit enabled devices and the open internet. This way you can completely stop your smart gear from communicating with the outside world or just limit which websites it can communicate with. So that was a rundown of the Linksys app with their Velop line of mesh routers. Now you can manage your Velop network from your browser by logging onto your router's IP, which is most likely 192.168.1.1. Once you pass the prompts to use the mobile app, you will be able to create a router password to access your network's online configuration. It may not be as polished, but it will get the job done. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave your questions in the comments below. Was there a feature in particular you were looking for? Tell me in the comments below. Also, keep in mind that features are added often, so be sure to read the Q&As and all the product details to look for the features you're interested in. You can find some of those linked in the description below. Also, in the description, you can find links to our website, social media pages, and Patreon where you can directly support the channel. Once again, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.